26. <clears throat> yeah. And let me just show you what the original problem was. In other words, they it, it's really trivial when they give you those two dimensions. I, I yeah. think it's a typo. I think they meant to not give you those two dimensions. Uh, it might be. Yeah. I've seen a lot of problems like this where you cannot figure it out by just doing subtraction and addition. Um, you have to be able to know that this line right there Yes, sir. That's the same as if I drew it over there in terms of perimeter. And this line right here is the same as if I draw it like that. So the perimeter is the perimeter of that rectangle. Yes, sir. Always. So you don't really need those two numbers, and it makes a much better problem if you don't have them, actually. Yes, sir. All right. But you'll see, I, I've seen the version of that problem done correctly on a lot of ACT practice tests. Mm -hmm. Do not have those two dimensions. Okay, number 59. Okay. Tell me what we should do first. Square. Okay, so we would have the radius, which would be, oh, we, we, we would draw. We would draw a model, a graph. Mm -hmm. Wow. They've made changes in this program. Hold on. This is really weird. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to do it like this, although I ran into problems doing it this way. Uh, I thought I had solved that problem, but I obviously did not. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is... Draw a graph. Okay. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, okay. And our points are there, 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 and there. That's right. And we have a circle inscribed in that square. Yes. And what's the equation of that circle? What's the general equation of a circle? All right. So that's x minus h squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. Okay. Fill in everything you know based on this, that that's 4 and that's 4. So the radius is going to be two, which means that the radius squared is four, so that narrows our choices down to either C or D. Okay. And H and K are both two and two, which means that it's going to be X minus two and Y minus two. Yes. Okay, good. And there's always two questions on the test regarding conic sections, almost exclusively circles and ellipses. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, this is the problem with this. Yeah, I've not figured this out yet, and it is problematic. Uh, when I'm it's substituted this new mode, and it takes like 45 seconds to close out the file so that I can go to the next one. Um, go ahead and start reading number 60. Yes, sir. Wow, this one, particularly 
easy also. Mm -hmm. So that is... Tell me how you're doing also, because I want to make sure you do it the most efficient way. All right. So what I did was I added the 2% that were deducted from it. So that's 35% off. So I multiplied 60 times 0. 0.65. I got 39 and, it, and I divided 39 by 60, which gave me 65%. Okay. First of all, conceptually, you can't do what you did. Okay. Okay. In other words, it's two steps. Uh, the first step, going to multiply that by 85%. Okay. And then you got to take that answer and multiply okay. that by 80%. And notice oh. there is a difference. Okay. So it is that way, not the way uh -huh. I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can't just add the percents and multiply by 35%. Because it's kind of okay. like a continuous accumulation. Okay, so 20% 20... 20 is a reduction from 51, not from 60. Okay, good. Okay. All right. So what does that make? Um, 40, it's got to be 40. Um, huh, just a second here. Oh, that's the uh, new price, so it's got to be 51. So it's 68%, not 65. Where am I going wrong here? Oh, oh, I didn't take that answer and divide it by 60. Yeah. So that's 68. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to recommend that we skip... And the first 20 questions, shall we? Sounds good. Okay, let me guess at a spot here. We'll start with number 20. Eh, not bad. We'll just start here. And, yeah, yeah, let's go ahead and go from there. Okay. Sub intercept four. Okay. So, eight, let's see. Okay. H. Twenty three. Nine. Okay, we may have to start higher next time. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. I assume you started off this by dividing both sides by four. Ooh, I. I did it by plugging in A minus B equals 20. I guess I should have. Well, that's that not a bad way to do it. No, I get why you did it that. Um, okay. No, that's just as efficient. 25. Okay. Work me through this one. Okay. Receive constant. 
to make 300 units. Okay. Okay, so we just set 17x minus quantity 10x plus c um, equal to 1900, and we plug in 300 for x. Okay, so what this means right there, that's our profit. That's actually what we're setting to 1900. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. And then what else? So that is equal to 17 times 300 minus 10 times 300 plus C. Okay, so. that's a relatively straightforward equation. You don't have any problem solving that, right? That's right. Okay, let's go. Sorry for the blurriness. Um, if you can't see this, that's x to the 7a minus, wow, I can barely see it. Um, I think it's x two. to the 7a, yes, 2, and then quantity cubed is equal yeah. to x to the 57. Correct. Okay. So that's just going to be x to the 21a minus 6 is equal to x to the 57. And then, yeah, x to the 57. So we can just set the exponents equal. So 21a is equal to 63. A is equal to 3. Okay, I think I found the secret. That's not to use their Microsoft Windows Ink workspace. As long as I work under Paint, I don't have that other problem I was having. Um, okay. All right. So number 27. Okay, D. Okay, set this one up for me with an equation or an inequality. Okay, so 3n minus 9. When it's what, 3n, 3n plus 9 is less than 0. Okay. So that means 3n must be less than 9. Yes, 3n must be less than 9, no, less than negative 9. Right, right, right. And n must be less than negative 3. Okay. Now, you can draw a graph on this one, but not really needed if I just, you are used to working with these kind of problems. Yes, sir. So I just... What's the um, next part? The, the, it is J. Okay. So the X coordinate is 23, and that's all we actually need. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a pretty common question. You're going to certainly get that, I would think, on the test. But they give you one end point and the midpoint. Okay. Okay, 29. Okay, see. Okay, next time we'll start at 30. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 30. R over S, so that is J. Okay. Again, as long as you know Sokotoa. That's right. Fine on those three questions. Okay. 
Whatever x minus, okay, for all. So it's just asking for one of those, okay. Hmm. I don't know, that's kind of an interesting question, actually. Yes. Okay. Or for x. Okay, E. Okay, what did you do? Um, I tried to find a common denominator. Oh. oh, I think that's exactly what they're looking for. Yes. Yeah. In other words, 4x is the common denominator. I think so. And that's got to be 4 minus x over 4x. And that's equal. Yes. Hmm, to which one did you say? I said e. What am I missing here? Um, That is that. Ah, left out the 3. So you do get 4 minus 3x over 4x. Okay. An interesting problem. Um, I was thinking about doing it this way. Okay. And then 3x equals 4. And then, yeah, you don't really get anywhere doing that. Hmm. Yeah, that would have been completely the wrong path to take. Um, although, notice that if I didn't see your solution, which is the correct way to do it, try to find a least common denominator, um, there is one other way you could do it. Okay. And that is to pick numbers. Notice again, we have variables in the question and the same variable in each of the answers. Okay? Okay. So, um, what we could do is let's pick x equal, uh, generally we don't want to really pick um, 0 or 1. So let's pick x equal 2. Mm -hmm. So now we have 1 half minus 3 fourths. Well, what is that equal to? Negative uh, 1 fourth. Now we search all of our answers using an x equal 2 until we find oh. negative 1 fourth. And uh, a is certainly not it. Remember, I'm plugging in x equal 2, nor is b, nor is c. Uh, 3 halves minus 4 halves, nope. Uh, last one, we got 4 minus 6 all over 8. That is equal to negative 1 fourth. So this, this is a potential problem where you could pick numbers. And the only reason I'm pointing it out is because always look for this feature where you have variables in the new, and it can be more than one variable. Maybe it's x and y, and every answer is in terms of x and y. Um, so, um, but anyway, um, you are certainly correct to try to, find a least common denominator, that's the most direct way to the answer. Um, all right, 32. Okay. 
Jay. 33. Do you have your calculator in front of you? Yes, sir. So, oh, boy. So how would I do this on the calculator? What's the conversion factor when you're going from radians to degrees? Okay, radians to degrees is it's 180 over pi. Yes, and the reason you know it's 180 over pi instead of pi over 180 is because, is because. pi is what has radians. And you're trying That's to right. lose those and convert it to degrees, so those will cancel. Yes. Pi's cancel. It's four times one eight, four and a quarter times one eighty. Yes, sir. That's step hundred. Four point two five times one eighty is seven sixty five. Yeah. So that's D. So your calculator does not have a, a feature on it where you can put in radians and let it tell you degrees, does it? No, I don't think mine does either. So you have to know that conversion factor. Okay. Mm, you could make a rough guess. What's 2 pi radians equal to? Okay, 2 pi radians, that is equal to 360 degrees. Full circle. That's, so that's right. That's another thing worth remembering, okay? So yes, if 2 pi is 360, then 4 plus pi has to be 720 plus some amount. Well, there's only one answer up there that's 720 plus a little bit more. So you can actually do this without knowing this conversion factor, as long as you knew that 2 pi was 360. Yes, sir. All right. Whoops, hold on. How were you set for this test on the verbal and science and all of that? I um, think I'm doing pretty good. We're taking practice tests on that. I probably have some good points I can add. Okay. I do a five-hour PowerPoint presentation on the ACT test. Uh, really? Yeah, uh, 16 times a year <laughs> in the fall and again in the spring. And the presentation is for the entire test, not just the math part. Wow. But I've got the PowerPoint presentation, and I could probably give you the entire five hours in an hour. Uh, really? Really? I just have to do it on my laptop instead of the computer I'm on right now, uh, which doesn't read those PowerPoint files. Um, so uh, for sure, I would say, let's do at least one session of me yes. give, giving you some tips. Because quite frankly, you're doing fine on the math. I don't see any problems on the math at all. Um, you know, not that it doesn't help to practice some of those harder questions uh, frequently, but yeah. Uh, when is your test in August sometime? Yes, sir. It is, I think it might be sometime maybe in the upcoming week. Not this week, but the next. Then next Tuesday, we are going to have a session. Let's do it that way. Yes, sir. And I will go ahead and be set up on my laptop so that I can give you the the key points that it can't hurt you knowing on uh, on this test for the other parts of it, the verbal. The science is really verbal, to be honest with you. Everything else is reading. <laughs> yes, sir. It's really a reading in math. Uh, only 25% of your score is math, so... 75% is reading, essentially, even though they call it science. But That's right. It's really not science. It's just reading and interpreting articles that are about science. That's right. So, anyway. Um, 
let's see. Um, let's go ahead and look at 34. All right. So that's going to be E. I would, yes, E. Yeah, no, that's, that's right, because they're talking about this point right here. And at least visually, it looks equidistant from D. So that's that same distance from there to there, and it's a little bit further. So um, unless they have not drawn it to scale, it's got to be E. Now, that does bring up another point. When you see a figure on these tests and it does not have the comment figure not drawn to scale, then you can assume that it is. So you truly can do this one visually without doing any of the math. Yes, sir. Okay. Forty-five, forty-five, ninety. Okay, the median, the median. Could you, uh, the mean, mean, median, and mode. Mean is the average. Yeah. Median is the middle. The middle. Okay, like mode. the middle value in the set. Mode is what? Is the mode the one that occurs the most? Yes, mode is most. So okay, so the mode the mean, is 13. Which is the average of the median, which is the middle. So what do we have to do to this list of numbers? Line it up in order. Does that include um, the two 13s? Okay, so it's just one 13. No, I made a mistake. It was two 13s. Okay. Um, yeah, let me do it again. Yeah, it's every number in the list, especially if they're going to be asking about mode. That's very important. But it's also very important about the median. Okay. Because the median is the dead middle, and if it's an even number of digits, I get that? So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Not a bad idea to do that, just to make sure you didn't miss any like I was about to miss 13. Okay. Yes, sir. So what's the median? So the median is going to be 20. Okay. You take off that number, what's the median? Now it's 21. Okay. 37. Okay. D. I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I haven't even had time to figure out um, so what'd you do? Pick, uh, I just picked 15. 15, yeah. Because that satisfies sentence 1 and 2. That's right. Hmm. I'm not sure you can actually do it that way. Eh, yes, you can. In other words, you only have to find one. You're not trying to find all, because if there was more answers than just 15, uh, you wouldn't be able to add the digits unless they were the same. You know, if uh, 6 or 15 and 6 were both answers, uh, then that would be okay, but yeah, no, uh, very good. So all you need to do is try one combination and find the answer, and that's proof of it in that particular problem. Yes. 38? 
uh, undefined. I could switch to my other computer now, but I haven't turned it on in like three months, so I know it's going to take 30 minutes to get updates and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't, unless I know I'm going to use it like next week, I'll get it updated in advance of our sessions. Okay, the quintessential question and trick. It's where they give you the trig function of one angle, and then they ask you any of the other five trig functions of that same angle. F. Okay. What was your first step when you did this? So if, would you draw a graph? Well, not a graph, but a triangle. A triangle. Always. That is such a nifty first step for this. And label the angle, because the angle could be either that lower right one or the upper one, left one. And now what you do is you start dimensioning based on the information you have. Now you apply the Pythagorean theorem. And now what's the sign of B? So that is 3 over 5. Yeah. Now, there are other ways to do this, especially since you have a calculator. You could just take the inverse tan of 3 fourths, and then whatever angle that gives you, you could take the sine of that angle. And you're going to get a number that's maybe not exactly 3 fifths, but it'll be 0. 0.5999 or something like that. That's right. So there are other ways to do this problem as long as they let you use your calculator, but this is the way to do this problem 100% of the time. Yes, sir. What's a good way to do this problem before you even think about it? Um is uh i remember us doing one like this uh i just want you to get used to using this technique uh does it has something to do with the variable there's a variable in the question and every single one of the answers has a variable in it what That's method right. does that suggest that we use plug in a variable okay pick pick an m What's a good value for M to be? Uh, would it be 12? Yeah. Because we know what the answer is. What's the answer? So that is... How many miles will she walk in 15 minutes? That'll be four. Okay, so there's our answer. So we just start doing what? I'm plugging in 12 into each of these. Okay, that eliminates that until we get four, right? Until we get four. Okay, eliminates that one. It's D. Eliminates that one. Now this is, you gotta be a little bit careful here. Sometimes you can find two. So just because D was worked does not mean it's the answer. Oh, uh, okay. Because the one disadvantage that you have when you pick numbers is sometimes it's possible to pick a number where um, it produces two of these answers will be correct. Because we're picking numbers, okay? Yes, um, But in this case, that's not true because the last answer is 15 over 60, so that's not four. So now we know D is correct. But always be aware of that when you're picking numbers. Um, yes, sir. And I'm guessing maybe that had we picked um, a number like two, 
And she's walking four miles in five minutes. And she's going to walk 12 miles in 15 minutes, okay? Yes, sir. So had we picked two instead of 12, I like 12 because there's no math to be done. When you pick M equals 12, you know exactly that's 15 minutes, and we know how far she's going to walk in 15 minutes. That's um, right. But had that produced two answers that both fit the bill, then go back and just pick a different M. In other words, let's say that M equals 12 gave us two different answers that both equaled four. Yes, sir. Next step is to go back and just pick a different M, and that's going to resolve the issue. Yes, sir. Always. Uh, even if the second choice gives you two different answers, there will only be one overlapping answer. So yes, sir. you'll always be able to determine it. But yeah, that's almost the uh, textbook place to use the pick numbers um, solution. About 42. Okay, 42. That is... Hmm. So you don't know right off what are you going to do? So... You would need... Again, notice that we have a variable in the stem and all the answers have variables, the same variable. So what does that suggest we do? Uh, plug in a value. Try some numbers, okay. What's going to be key in picking numbers? Is it to make sure we try a plus and a minus? Or is it to make sure we try an odd and an even? Odd and an even. Uh -huh. In other words, this is a question about number theory. They want to know if you know what odd times odd or odd times even or even times even is. So let's pick an odd number. Give me an odd number. As low as can be. I think I lost audio again. I, don't, I can't hear you, Garrison, if you're still there. This happens every now and then, and you come back. Uh, Are you back? I uh, still can't hear you. If you can hear me, I'm guessing you need to log off and then log back on again. Okay, that's ah, better. You're back. Okay. So, Sorry about that. No problem. That happens every now and then. And sometimes uh, you get booted off, and sometimes you just have to. Uh, your audio comes back on again. So we're going to just try some numbers here. Let's start with what's a good odd number to try. Um, is three good? Yeah. In other words, you want low numbers, but you don't want to use zero or one. Okay. So yes. using three, what is this equal to? So that is going to be 36. Okay. Now try four. That is 37. No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's 28. Okay. 
both even numbers. That's right. So right offhand, that looks like it's got to be it. Um, we don't really need to go any further. Uh, despite the fact, eh, this is um, going to sound counter to what I just said, but in this particular case, I, I didn't really use picking numbers as the way to solve this. I just, that's the way I would automatically solve this. I would try out a few numbers. And the key is, do you need to use negative and positive or odd and even? That's what this question is all about. They're talking about even, so I'm going to use an odd and an even number. Notice that both of them produce even numbers. F's got to be it. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, That's always odd. That's always odd. That's sometimes odd, sometimes even. And without doing much further analysis of that, um, that's a little harder one to do. But certainly with the numbers we picked, this one, that's the way to handle that, is if you were still not certain that F is the correct answer, try, try your numbers in that, and you get 9 minus 6. Well, that's odd, so that doesn't work at all. <laughs> yes, sir. It doesn't work with an odd N. Okay, D. Yeah, this is a little tricky. I don't know if you fell for it or not. I almost did. Um, this is what they're trying. That's what's equal to 12. That's right. Which means the bottom dimension is what? That means that the bottom dimension is 12 as well. And the hypotenuse is? 12 root 2. Okay. Yeah, we can do this, I think. All right. This is more of a, this is more typical of a science question, incidentally. In other words, the whole science test is designed to get you to answer questions about charts, graphs, tables, things like that. Um, So 44 says, which of the following years had the greatest increase over the previous year? That looks like it would have been. Hmm. If your life depended on it, what would you have to do? I would have to... Um find the difference of each of them, but really it can be estimated. So that one, not not the first. You're absolutely right. Not the second. So not this one. Not, not this one, because the third is definitely bigger than either of those. Not that one. Not that one. So far, nothing has come close to that third one. That's not going to, and that's not going to. That's right. 
like I said, if you were going to live or die based on the answer, you'd go do the math. <laughs> That's right. Uh, oh, let's see. Same. Mm, this could be hard to do. Hold on a second. I can figure out how to do this. I can. So let's see. Let's put the question below and the picture above. And there we go. Number forty five. Go ahead. Here, I can move it so you can see all the answer choices. Census data shows that there were approximately 562 households in Eaton County with a high-speed internet connection in 2000. According to this information, the number of Potterville households with high-speed internet connection was approximately what percent of the total number of households in Eaton County with a high-speed internet connection in the year of 2000? Okay. Hold on a second. I think I need the title of that. Yeah. That table is for um, the town of Potterville. Okay. And the question is given that there's 652 in all of Eaton County, which surrounds Potterville. Okay. Twenty-seven percent. Hundred and seventy-six divided by six fifty-two. Yes, sir. Okay. Um. Now let me just close out one of them, and we can go to the next one. There we go. Boy, they love these questions. On which I kind of hate. In fact, this part of my presentation, I generally skip <laughs> because mm -hmm. it's so hard to fully explain to students what the nature of two equations, of a system of two equations and two variables is. Um, but okay. I wouldn't skip it with you. <laughs> Okay. In other words, you're, you're able to understand the explanation here. Um, but I do tend to skip this particular example when I'm doing these presentations. So what are we looking for? We are looking for... What we'll gives you an infinite number of solutions? Okay, so if they are both the same equation, they're going to be in a ratio of each other. Okay. Based on 12x and 36x, it looks like it is a ratio of 3, which means that A would have to be 2. That's, to get to That's it. No, that's perfect reasoning. Oops. And the other side of that coin is what would give you no solution? Although, to be honest with you, every single problem I've seen on these ACTs is always about infinite solutions. They don't address either a single solution or uh, no solution at all. At least I, I can't remember seeing a problem like that. Um, 47. How are you going to do this one? Okay. Just find the square root of 169, so that's 13. Okay. In other words, if I put this in exponential format, it's this. That's right. Okay. And that is also not a, not a whole lot of log questions on the test, so 
wouldn't worry about learning your log rule. In general, you don't need it, especially if you know how to take a logarithmic expression and express it as an exponential. That's all you need, though. That's right. Okay. This symbol that's between the letters A and B? That's that, right. Is that a real symbol? Is it a real mathematical symbol? Not as far as I know. No, it isn't. Uh, I call these problems symbol problems. And they drive people crazy, but they're really the simplest problems of all. Yes. Is all you have to do is substitute. In other words, they're, they're telling you the definition of that function means a plus b cubed. And that's a, and that's b. So what is a plus b cubed? That is 216j. Yeah. And some of them are a little more complicated than this, but pretty much it, it, these are all just plug-in. Yes. What are you going to do here? Mm -hmm. We would draw a graph. I think I would just because this could be a hard problem if this parallelogram is not parallel to one of our axes. Could be an extremely difficult problem. In other words, if I just put any old parallelogram in there, let's say I put a parallelogram that was angled like this. Okay. Well, not quite like that. Maybe like this. Now, that's not easy to find the area of that. If I stick that in the XY coordinate plane. That's you're gonna, right. You're going to have to do things like find the distance between that point and that point, find the distance between that point and that point, and then multiply base times height. So it's very useful to draw a diagram here and see if we're dealing with a parallelogram that's parallel to one of our axes. That's so right. I definitely would draw one. That's two comma four and five comma four. It's starting to look like the top axis and four comma one. Let's see, four comma one, and it's got to be about right there. And never waste the time to do these exact. It's not worth the effort to put a grid on there. In other words, there's nothing wrong at all with approximating it. And now we notice that Both the top and the bottom horizontal lines are parallel with the x-axis. Yes. So what is so, so. the area of a parallelogram? It's just the base times the height. So, so that's 3 times 3 to 9. Yeah. Now, notice that if I rotate that parallelogram like 20 degrees, it becomes a much different problem. Still That's solvable, right. but a lot more math needed. Oh, interesting. Actually, the best way to solve that would not be the way I described. If I rotated that 20 degrees, the best way to solve it would be to rotate it back 20 degrees, I think. Instead of solving for all the distances, in other words, instead of solving for that and that, um, I don't know. It's an interesting problem, actually. Um, okay, let's see. Um, here, let me reopen this page so I can get rid of my writing. And let's finish up with this problem here. All right.
um, 50. It's one half. Okay, how'd you do that? Uh, I just did x is equal to 2y plus 3. And then I found the slope from that dividing by 2. Good, very good. Um, would you say the answer was? Said it was one half. Okay. All right, Garrison, I, I got to thank you already for that math part of the ACT. Um, Great. And next week, uh, I, we can use the whole hour to review the verbal part only, or if we have time, I'll go ahead and review some of the math. But in all honesty, I think you're, I, do, I don't think you're going to need any of the tips that I normally provide. In other words, I can only provide so many tips to students in a five hour period. So uh, there's a few that are pretty, pretty cool ones, I think, that'll be useful to you, at least on the verbal part. Um, so we can spend the whole hour next week doing three quarters of my presentation. And I think we'll be able to cover all of it uh, with that. And so, uh, okay, so I'll talk to you next week, and I'll be ready to do it on my laptop. Sounds good. Okay. Have a good week, Garrison. Talk to you later. You too. Bye-bye.